Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson where we're going to talk about the kitchen and we're going to talk about all kinds of things that you would find in the kitchen. I hope that you enjoy this lesson. The kitchen is one of my favorite places in the house because I really like food. I like making food as well but I do like the kitchen because I like snacks. I like supper time. I like dinner time. I like lunch. I just like eating. Um I also exercise quite a bit because when you like to eat you do need to walk quite a bit and you do need to work out to offset the food you eat. I know that it will seem like I'm teaching a lot of really simple vocabulary but with each word that I teach you I will try to add a few phrases and I'll talk about how I use that word in regular everyday speech. So, I'm gonna start by teaching you uh three verbs that we use when we're in the kitchen. Sometimes we bake in the kitchen. Sometimes we cook in the kitchen and sometimes we make things in the kitchen. Let me back up. When we bake, we're usually talking about things like bread or cookies or pies. So, I could say today I'm going to bake bread. Today I'm going to bake a pie. Uh tomorrow I'm going to bake muffins. Usually when we are baking, we are putting things in the oven. So, the oven is the appliance where you open the door, you put something in and you close it. Um but usually when we bake, we're talking about things that we make out of flour. I do need to add as well, this is a very North American English lesson. The English that I am teaching you today about the kitchen will also reflect that these are things that we do in Canada and the United States. So, this I know around the world, there are different ways to prepare food. This lesson is very much a North American English lesson. So, we bake bread, we bake pies, we bake cakes. Those are all really yummy things by the way. One moment, I forgot my glasses and I'm already having trouble reading stuff. Um we also cook in the kitchen. So, when you cook things, generally you cook things on the stove top. So, again, the oven is where you put things in. The stove top is where you put pots and pans and frying pans and you cook things. So, generally, we cook foods that we will be eating for our meals. Um so, you would cook spaghetti. You would cook hamburgers. You would cook hot dogs. Um you would cook a meal. You would say that tonight. Um who's cooking tonight? Is Jen cooking or is Bob cooking? So, cooking refers to the general practice of preparing meals. Um if it's a meal where you need to heat it up. Um if you don't need to heat up the meal, you're not cooking it. But if you're confused about whether to use bake or cook, here's the simpler way to refer to things. We often just use the verb make when we're talking about food. So, if you think about all of the food items I've already mentioned, I could say, oh, I might make bread today. I might make cupcakes today. I might make hamburgers today. I might make hot dogs today. I'm thinking that tonight, I might make spaghetti. So, if you don't know whether to use bake or cook, the simple way out is to just use the verb to make. So, often we make supper. Um Jen and I take turns making supper. Actually, I think I've mentioned this before. In the summer, when Jen is busy on the flower farm, I make supper most of the time. We can also use dinner. Uh in the winter, Jen makes supper more than I do because I'm a little busier than her. So, if you're not sure whether to use bake or cook, just use make. The place in the kitchen where you prepare a lot of things is called the counter or the countertop. So, you can see the surface here. That is the area where you prepare food, okay? So, it's not where you cook food. It's where you prepare food in order to cook it. We are often preparing food on our countertop in order to get it ready to cook. So, when I make um cupcakes, I first uh get all the ingredients out and I use the countertop to prepare the food for the oven. Um the oven again just to review is the appliance that heats to a certain temperature. Often when you are cooking, actually all the time when you are baking or cooking using the oven, uh you will preheat the oven to a certain temperature. Interestingly enough, all of our recipes in Canada are still in Fahrenheit because we love the United States and we do a lot of things the same as them. When you use the oven to bake something, you will preheat the oven. It'll say preheat the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So, you will preheat the oven. Then you will prepare the food that you want to bake and then you will put it in the oven. I should mention 
you don't just bake in the oven. You can also roast things in the oven. So when you're preparing meats, you often use the word roast. You know, I'm going to roast some chicken in the oven. I'm going to roast a roast in the oven. And I think we would even say cook. What I think I would cook chicken in the oven. Just use the verb make. It's a lot easier. Um we also have the stove or the stove top. So, the stove top or stove uh is the place where you cook things. Um just let me do one thing here folks. I forgot to open something up before I started the lesson. There we go. Now, I can keep track of where I am. So, the stove does not need to be preheated too much. You just get a pot or pan. You put it on the stove and you start to cook. We also have what's called a microwave. So, I remember as a kid when I was about 10 years old, we bought a microwave. It was a brand new thing in the world. We had never seen it before. My dad and mom came home from the store and said, we bought a microwave and I said, what is a microwave? And then we spent about a month, I remember as a child, learning how to heat different things up in the microwave or how to cook different things in the microwave. Probably the coolest thing for me was that you could microwave an egg. I don't do that anymore because I don't like the taste of a microwaved egg. By the way, you need to poke the yolk with a fork before you try that. I usually fry my eggs in a frying pan. Um but yes, a microwave is interesting. You put food in, you punch in the amount of time you want to cook it and you hit start and then it beeps when it is done. So, generally, we use our microwave to thaw things out or to cook some things, some small things. Um but usually, we use our stove or oven when we are making food. Um let's see here. We also on our counter. By the way, I'm talking about appliances right now that are on your counter. On our counter, we have a toaster. We often put bread in the toaster. We put the toaster down and we wait for the toaster to pop up. When the toaster pops up, you decide if the bread is brown enough or if it is toasted enough. If it's not, you put the toaster down again. Sometimes, if you put the toaster down too many times, the toast will burn. Sorry, I have a little bit of a little tickle in my throat. But let's talk about the toaster from the beginning again. You get two slices of bread. You put it in the toaster. This is a two slice toaster. You can also buy a four slice toaster. We have a four slice toaster because there's lots of people in the family. You put the toast down or you put the toaster down. You can use either phrase and then you wait. After a certain amount of time, it pops up and you kind of look, oh, that toast isn't as brown as I would like it or that toast isn't as toasted as I would like it and you put it down again. There's also a dial where you can set how long the toaster toasts the toast. You want me to say that sentence again? You can set how long the toaster toasts the toast uh, before it pops up. Um we also on our counter and on many counters in North America, you will find a coffee maker. Now, the coffee maker has changed over the last few years. Many years ago, we had an older style. Most people now have this style which is a single cup coffee maker. Um I think you could call it like an insta brew or uh, ours is from a company called Keurig and many people just call it a Keurig now but it is a um coffee maker that makes one cup of coffee. This is the style of coffee maker that I have in my kitchen. It's very very handy because I'm the only one that drinks coffee and I only drink one cup. So, it's nice to uh be able to just make one cup of coffee. Let's see where I am here. We also have a kettle. Uh we do drink tea in our family and sometimes we will boil water in the kettle. Um let me go back to the coffee maker though. The coffee maker takes pods. You put a pod in the coffee maker. It is a small amount of coffee that's prepackaged. You put it in the coffee maker. You close the lid and you select how much coffee you want depending on the size of your mug. Uh I actually don't use pods though. I have a reusable filter that makes exactly one cup of coffee. So, we also have a kettle. Sometimes, we put the kettle on. Uh that means that you put water in the kettle and you start the kettle uh and then people can wait until sometimes they whistle. Our kettle does not whistle when it's done. It automatically turns off. You hear a little click and then you know the water has boiled and you can make some tea. Um but definitely, we have a kettle as well. 
We also on the counter have a knife block. So uh, in many North American kitchens, you will have a block of wood with lots of little holes in it and then different size knives for cutting different things. So, we have a knife block in our kitchen as well. It has different knives for cutting different kinds of food and it also has what are called steak knives along the bottom which is a small knife for eating different meats and we have a pair of scissors in our knife block. The most common thing for people in our house to say about the knife block is where are the scissors? Who used the scissors last? Did somebody forget to put the scissors back in the knife block? So, that is probably the most popular pair of scissors in our house and it often goes missing. Um in the kitchen as well, you will have cupboards. So, cupboards or cabinets. We usually call them cupboards but cupboards are the things with doors that you can open and that is where you store your food as well as all your cutlery or utensils or plates and cups and bowls. So, your dishware. So, cupboards are just small cabinets that you have in your kitchen and it is a great place uh, to store all of the things that you own. So, when we are done doing the dishes, we put all the dishes away in the cupboards. When we come home from the grocery store, we put all the groceries away in the cupboards as well. So, we have cupboards where we keep um all our pots and pans and plates and bowls and mugs and we have other cupboards where we keep most of our food. The food that doesn't need to go in the fridge. Uh let's see here. Um let's see here. Um oh, Evgenie has become a member of the channel. Thank you so much, Evgenie, for becoming a member. That is awesome of you. Thank you so much for doing that. Um there are also drawers in the kitchen. So, we have kitchen drawers. By the way, we do call them kitchen cupboards and we do call them kitchen drawers sometimes. So, when someone says, do you know where um this item is? I can't think of an example. Someone might say, oh, check in the kitchen drawer beside the utensils. So, we refer to it as the kitchen drawer but a drawer is something that you pull out. You can open a drawer to look for certain things and we do have a special kind of drawer called a utensil drawer. So, a utensil drawer is a drawer where we store uh three things in particular. Our forks, spoons and knives. You notice I'm going fairly quickly because a lot of this I think is review for you. So, I'll try to slow down a little bit but in our utensil drawer, it might also be called the cutlery drawer. We call it the utensil drawer here in Canada. I'm curious to see what Brent calls it in America whether they call it a utensil drawer but in that drawer, we keep primarily the forks that we would use when eating a meal the spoons that we would use when eating a meal and the knives we would use. This knife by the way is called a butter knife. A butter knife is a knife that is not really sharp. It's made more for spreading things on food than it is for cutting food. So, it's usually called a butter knife. Uh we have larger spoons which we call serving spoons. So, if I'm serving food and if people need to get food from a serving bowl, they would use a serving spoon. So, if I had a big bowl of potatoes in a serving bowl, there would be a big serving spoon in it. A serving a normal spoon is this big. A serving spoon is this big. So, you can scoop up the food that you want. When you eat, you generally eat using a plate. Hey, Tamer, thank you so much for the super chat. That is awesome of you. Thank you very much. Um a plate is what you use to eat. You might also use a bowl. So, a plate is used for things like vegetables and meat um and rice or noodles. A bowl is generally used when you eat soup or when you eat stew. So, or cereal. People eat a lot of cereal as well in a bowl. So, they'll have a bowl of soup, a bowl of cereal um or a bowl of stew. One of those. Um you might be wondering the difference between a glass and a mug. I didn't add cup on here. This is a glass because it's made of glass. If this was made of plastic, I would call it a cup. So, I have a glass of water here. If it was made of plastic, I would say I have a cup of water. When I drink my coffee in the morning, I drink it from a mug. A mug almost always has a handle on the side. So, how much coffee do I drink every day? 
I have one mug of coffee every day and that's it and I drink decaf coffee all the time. Always decaf. Uh a ladle is what you use when you have something like soup and we generally talk about scooping. Okay. So, you would use a ladle to scoop out soup and put it in a bowl. You could say if I said how much soup would you like? You could say one or two scoops or you could say oh, I'll have one or two ladlefuls. Okay. But a ladle is something that you use usually for a more liquid food like a soup or a stew to scoop it out. Um I'm just reading Juno saying Bob the Canadian you are such an amazing man. I really like your English lessons. Anyway, let me head to the question. Have you ever cooked birani in your kitchen? No, I have not cooked food from very many places in the world. So, um spatula. So, here is an interesting one. I actually call this an egg flipper which is not the real name. So, sometimes in your kitchen you will call something by a name that your family sometimes calls it. I grew up calling this a flipper or an egg flipper but it's really called a spatula. This is something you use when you're making something usually in a frying pan that you need to flip. Okay. So, you use a spatula to flip an egg. If you were cooking a hamburger patty, you would use a spatula to flip the patty. A spatula is used to flip things that you are frying in a frying pan. Um this though is also a spatula. So, this spatula is used to clean out a bowl. When you're baking and when you dump the ingredients out of the bowl, sometimes you use a spatula to clean the bowl out. So, this is a spatula. This is a spatula. They have the same name but they're kind of two different things. Uh let's see here. This is called a whisk. Sometimes you need to whisk things in a bowl. Sometimes when you are making something, you will put some milk and some eggs and a few other things in a bowl and then you whisk it. So, a whisk is used to whisk. So, it has the same name as the action that it does. Okay. So, when you whisk something, you put it in a bowl and then you you go like this really fast and you whisk it. Um sometimes when you are making something, you need to stir it and you would then use a wooden spoon. We have a number of wooden spoons in our kitchen. So, let's say you're making something that needs to be flipped. You would then use a spatula. If you are cooking something on the stove that needs to be stirred, you would use a wooden spoon. So, we use a wooden spoon when we're cooking. Let's say we chop up some vegetables and we have some vegetables and meat in a frying pan. We would use a wooden spoon to stir it. Maybe you were making soup. If we were making soup and we needed to stir it while it was cooking, we would use a wooden spoon. So, wooden spoons are very popular when you are cooking or making food in the kitchen when you need to stir the food. Uh we definitely have a can opener. Um I think this can opener is owned by almost everyone in North America. This exact can opener. Um there are many different kinds of can openers of course but this is I think the most popular style of can opener in the entire country of Canada. So, you use a can opener when you have a can of food and when you need to take the lid off. So, you you put the can opener on and you turn the can opener until it goes all the way around the can and then you take the lid off. You have to be very careful. You don't wanna accidentally cut yourself on the lid uh and then you dump the food out of the can and then you rinse the can off in the sink and you recycle the can and the lid. So, a can opener is used to open a can of food that you want to heat up or that you want to cook and eat. Let me just check where I am. A rolling pin. So, this is a fun one. When I make pizza, I actually make pizza dough in the bread machine. I'll talk about that a bit more later but eventually, I take the dough out on the counter and then I put some flour on the counter and I use a rolling pin to roll the dough flat. A rolling pin is very, very handy. If you are making a pie, when you are making the pie crust, you also use a rolling pin to make it very, very flat. Um we definitely have a rolling pin. You actually saw the rolling pin in the thumbnail for this video. I'm pretty sure. We also have a mixer. So, a mixer has two uh beaters that you attach to it and when you turn it on, they spin together. 
a mixer is actually kind of like a whisk. Often when we are baking something or when we are preparing something to bake it, we put the ingredients in a mixing bowl and then we use a mixer to mix it. So, we mix the ingredients in the mixing bowl with a mixer. <laughs> Hopefully, that made some sense. Uh it has a very distinct sound. You plug the mixer into the wall and then you turn it on and you set the speed and then you mix things up. Uh, um something that my kids like to do. If I use a mixer, if we use a mixer to make cookies or anything that has a sweet dough, my kids like to lick the beater afterwards. So, if we make icing or frosting for a cake using the mixer, one of the kids wants to lick all of the icing off when we are done. So, that's a very common thing uh to do when you are baking. Bread machine. So, this was a relatively new appliance about 20 or 30 years ago. Um we bought our bread machine for very little money and you put all the ingredients in it and you push a few buttons and then four hours later, you have bread. Now, we actually don't use our bread machine just to make bread. We also use our bread machine to make pizza dough. So, we'll put the ingredients in for pizza dough. Usually, some oil, some flour, some salt, some yeast. Very simple dough and we'll let the bread machine make the dough and before it cooks it, we take it out and we roll it and flatten it. We let it rise. We flatten it and then we bake pizza or make pizza with it. So, bread machine, very handy appliance to have in the house. Uh someone earlier mentioned the blender. A blender is something that you use to liquefy things. So, when you put a bunch of fruit in a blender and then you turn the blender on, it chops them so fine that it becomes a liquid. We use our blender to make what's called a smoothie. A smoothie is something where you put some water some spinach, some peaches, some strawberries, some bananas and it blends it together and it turns it into something you can drink. It's very, very good. We also have something called a food processor. Now, we don't own a food processor but a food processor, oh, there's two pronunciations. Food processor, food processor. Oh, interesting. I didn't even know that. By the way, apparently, you can say food processor or food processor. I I didn't even it's fun to teach these lessons because I realize how English is kind of fun and weird. Anyways, a food processor is used to chop up food. You can chop food up with a knife but if you have a food processor, you can use it to chop up your food. We also have probably three or four cutting boards in our house. We don't cut our food on the counter. We don't take food out and put it on the countertop and cut it up or chop it up. We always use a cutting board because it's just better. You have to handle food properly because you don't want to get people sick. So, we always cut our food on a cutting board or a chopping block. Um they are somewhat the same thing. A cutting board is maybe a little bit smaller. Um we of course have a fridge or a refrigerator. In North America, most fridges have a cold part on the bottom that is about three degrees Celsius and then they have a freezer on the top that is below zero degrees Celsius. So, this is where you keep milk and fruits and vegetables uh, and things that need to be cold. The freezer is where you keep things that need to be frozen. So, we often when we make a meal that's too big, we will often freeze the rest of the meal so that it lasts a long time and then we'll eat it later. So, a fridge has two parts. It has a cold part on the bottom that's called the fridge and then the top part is called the freezer. Again, fridge is short for the English word refrigerator. I think most of you knew that though. Um we do not have a dishwasher. A dishwasher is a large appliance that you can put all your dishes in and then it will wash them for you. We do our dishes by hand, okay? So, we do our dishes in the sink. When you talk about doing dishes, that's how you say it. You say, after the meal, we do the dishes. You can say, wash the dishes. Um I think we use both. We wash the dishes after the meal. We do the dishes but someone will wash some and then they will rinse and someone will dry the dishes. We uh we had a dishwasher a long time ago. 
But when you have a lot of people in your house, sometimes it's actually faster to do the dishes by hand because we have so many dishes, they wouldn't all fit in the dishwasher. Um we of course do our dishes in the sink. So, there are usually two sinks in a kitchen sink. Does that make sense? In a North American home, there's usually a faucet or tap and there's there are two sides to the sink. So, it just allows you a little more flexibility when you are using your sink. And of course, uh the sink has a faucet and there is a tap for hot water and there is a tap for cold water and then usually, I don't know if you can see it, there's like a little thing on the edge that you can take out and you can shoot water on your dishes. I don't know the official name for it uh at all. Let's see here. Um Sio Wu is asking if people use rubber gloves in the kitchen. We don't Sio Wu but many people do use rubber gloves in the kitchen for sure when they're doing dishes. Um when you fry something like an egg, you use a frying pan. When you cook something like soup, you use a pot. So, the only real difference between a frying pan and a pot is that a frying pan is not very tall. It's a very shallow pan and it's used for frying things like maybe you're gonna cook some vegetables. You're gonna fry some vegetables. You're gonna fry an egg, etc. A pot on the other hand is used for making something like soup or if you are going to boil something. Maybe you're going to boil potatoes like in this picture. You would use a pot to boil your potatoes. Um so, pots and pans. That's something you hear often in the sometimes when people get married, they'll say um if people say what do you want as a gift? They'll say oh, we don't have any pots and pans. Maybe you could buy us some pots and pans. Um and kids when they are young like to play with pots and pans. Um pots make really good drums and pot lids make really good cymbals. Do you know what cymbals are? It's like you can tell I'm not very musical. Um so, kids love playing with pots and pans when they are kids. Kids like playing with pots and pans when they are kids. That was a redundant English sentence. Yes. Um yes, kids definitely like playing with pots and pans. Uh in our kitchen, we have a spice rack. This is a very common thing to see in a North American kitchen and probably in kitchens around the world. On a spice rack, you will have small jars of the most common types of spices that you would use. So, often when I am cooking something or when I am making something, if it if the recipe calls for a certain spice, I will go to the spice rack and get it and I will put some spice that spice on uh, in the amount that it is that is needed. There is definitely a kitchen timer in most kitchens. Jen and I have slightly different methods of cooking. When I cook something or when I make food, I almost always set a timer. Jen kind of cooks more by taste and how things look um and she's just better at sensing when something is done. For me, if the recipe says to bake it for 20 minutes, I bake it for 20 minutes. I set the timer. When the timer goes off, I take the food out. Um Jen is a little more like, well, it could stay in for another minute or two and generally her food tastes better than mine. So, I think she's just better at that aspect of it. Um Rod says, my younger son makes a drum set out of pots and pans at home. Pretty quiet. Yeah. Pots and pans when used as drums are very very loud for sure. Um we have oven mitts. When you take something out of the oven, it's very very hot. So, before you do that, you will put on oven mitts. Oven mitts are protective mittens that you use when you're taking hot things out of the oven. So, we definitely have more than one pair of oven mitts. They're very handy. I'm always worried I'm gonna forget to put the oven mitts on. Uh, Once we had a pair of oven mitts with a small hole in it and I burned myself a little bit. That was not good. Um in the kitchen, you will probably have a grater. So, if you have cheese or carrots and you want to grate it. So, when you grate something, you rub it against the grater and it makes it into small pieces. A lot of times, we will grate cheese before we put it on a pizza or we will grate carrots or other things if we want to chop them really small. So, in a kitchen, you will definitely have a grater. 
Um, earlier, I mentioned a few times that when you're making something in the kitchen, you will often use a mixing bowl. A mixing bowl is just a giant bowl. Okay, so a mixing bowl is a really big bowl that you use. You put all the ingredients in the bowl and then you either stir them with a wooden spoon. Maybe like this person, you whisk it with a whisk. But a mixing bowl is used to mix ingredients before you bake them or cook them. Um, whatever the recipe is calling for. By the way, that's how you talk about a recipe. When a recipe, it lists what you need. You say that's what the uh, recipe calls for. Um, let me see here. We have cookie sheets. So, there's different kinds of pans. One of the most popular ones in our house is called a cookie sheet. A cookie sheet is a flat piece of metal uh, that you use when you make cookies. So, we have three different cookie sheets in our kitchen. When we make cookies, we have cookies in the oven. We have cookies on a cookie sheet ready to go in the oven and we usually have cookies on the third cookie sheet that just came out of the oven. Um fresh cookies are super super yummy. Um we also have a colander in the kitchen. A colander is a pan with holes. So, when you need to drain something like noodles, if you've boiled noodles in a pan or a pot, you would pour them into the colander in the sink and then it would help you drain the water. We also have what's called a strainer which is similar. You can see a colander is its own pot whereas a strainer is something you use with a pot. It's kind of hard to explain but I think you get my point. With a strainer, you can actually lift things out of boiling water as well. And then uh the last two things, you have measuring spoons and you have whoa, looks like I lost one of my slides. There is supposed to be a slide for measuring cup. So, I'll just talk about it. Measuring spoons are very very small and on the measuring spoon, it says the amount. So, it will say something like one teaspoon or one tablespoon or it might say 15 milliliters or uh, 30 milliliters. So, there's two systems of measurement and I'm not sure why measuring cups didn't show up. Um in our recipes, it'll sometimes call for three or four cups of flowers. Flowers. Flour. Don't say flowers. Three or four cups of flour, okay? So, you will get your measuring cup. You will get the one that says one cup on it and you will get the number of cups of flour that you need. 